Oh, wow. Talk about the discomfort zone. I am going to speak on insurance. Insurance, insurance. Everybody hates insurance. Everybody needs insurance. People want insurance that can't get it. People who have it say, I'm paying too much for it. Insurance is one of the plagues of our life, but it is one of the most important things we have. Why? We need insurance for insurance. I talk about the discomfort zone a lot and um, not understanding insurance is what gets people into trouble a lot of the time. We talk, okay, what are the main kinds of insurance we need? Medical insurance. Well, that's not controversial, is it? Medical insurance. It, the cost of, of having medical insurance gives us I don't know, anxiety, stress, all kinds of problems. So we look at medical insurance and we say, can't someone help me with this? Well, there are people that can help you with it and I'm hoping to provide that information so you have the basic idea of what insurance would be good for you as far as health insurance. It's pretty important and it's the law. Actually, it's against the law right now not to have medical insurance. It's just so vast and so unbelievably difficult that they can't track it. But if you file a tax return and you haven't had insurance, you're going to see a uh, fine on your insurance, um, for insurance on your tax return. You actually can get fined for that. Which brings us to auto insurance. Do the majority of people have auto insurance? I thought so. I thought nobody can have, um, not nobody can have a car without auto insurance right because when you leave you don't buy your car for cash and if you have a loan on your auto the loan requires you to have auto insurance so here's what i found out because i've been hit twice in the last 20 years by people who did not have insurance here's what happens they get insurance so that they qualify for the loan they walk off the lot and they cancel their insurance. In the old days, there wasn't a computer that could track you and say, whoa, 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 somebody doesn't have insurance, but now they can. The uh, loan, the people that have your auto loan actually get a notification from your insurance that it's been canceled. And guess what? You signed a piece of paper when you got your car that says if you don't put your auto insurance in place, your lender can. And that is, can be up to three times as expensive as the insurance you can get by yourself. Auto insurance, a must. It's actually a law. You can actually get in trouble if you're stopped by a policeman and cannot produce auto insurance. So auto insurance, a must. And uh, later on, we'll go into the different kinds of auto insurance you might have if you have a brand new car, if you have a lease, if you have an old car that you don't need to have a collision on because it's not worth anything, we'll go into that. The other insurance that is probably underused but needed is renter's insurance. If you go to apply for an apartment, your landlord can say, I need evidence of renter's insurance. What is renter's insurance? What it says in the policy is that it covers you for the things you own. So let's say you have a brand new sofa, stereo equipment, a 52 inch screen TV, and um, maybe one of the appliances is yours, the refrigerator. So you put a value on those things. You call up in your insurance company if you have one, or you go online and say, Google it, I need renter's insurance. And then it'll come up, it'll pop up, and then you can get quotes for your renter's insurance. And it's based really on what you have. And why does your landlord want you to have that? Because if something happens to the apartment building, an earthquake makes it fall down, a fire comes, the landlord's insurance does not cover contents that was inside your apartment. That's very important to know that even if your landlord isn't requiring it, when you live in a place and you're renting, you should have renter's insurance. And you can say, oh, I don't have much. Uh, if you really look around, if you had to replace that, it would cost you six to $10,000. And if you don't have renter's insurance, you're gonna have to replace it without getting help from your insurance. So uh, renter's insurance may be $300 a year. I think it's good to invest in it. Like I said, Google it and find out how you can get renter's insurance. Inside renter's insurance are valuable items. 
What if you have three rings and a watch that are worth forty thousand? Your ins your furniture isn't worth anything. You don't have any appliances. You have an old TV, but you've got your grandmother's watch. You've got uh, uh, your grandmother's ring. You've got your mother's diamond necklace. You've got some earrings that your boyfriend gave you. You have to add what's called a jewelry rider. That means that these are added to the policy, and you have an appraisal for them, so that if they get lost, stolen, or they perish in a fire, you can be they can be replaced because you have it listed under your valuable items or a jewelry rider on your renter's policy, also your homeowner's policy. Either way, you need a valuable items rider. Um, they, they don't automatically cover your jewelry and valuable things on a renter's policy or on a mortgage insurance policy. They don't do that. Um, life insurance, we're all important. Life insurance is when we die. So we pay for life insurance every month. So when we die, somebody we love might get some money or somebody like a credit card company or a debtor will get paid off from your life insurance. It's good to get life insurance. I think you should get it at a very young age. I think you should always think ahead. There's whole life and there's term. I think you need to look that up. So term policies are normally cheaper. Whole life gives you like a savings account. Look them up, it's very important. Also in the insurance uh, industry, they have something called long-term health. Those of us who are 65 and older know what that means. That means if you fell down and you need to be in a care facility for a couple of months, you have insurance to pay something toward that. There's minimums, there's maximums, there's all kinds of rules on them. But I know that I got my long-term health care policy in my 40s and my, um, my premium has been pretty low. And a couple of people I know, including my estate attorney, said, well, congratulations for thinking ahead and doing that. So if you're in your 40s and 50s and you're, you're listening to me, look into long-term health. Now, do all these insurances cost a lot of money? Yes, they do. And sometimes you can be insurance poor, which means you're paying so many premiums and you don't really have the money to do so. So what I'd like to do going forward is talk about the most necessary ones. I touched on them today um, and I'm going to go in it, into it more thoroughly. I will have experts that can help you decide what kind of insurance you need and want and if you have the right thing already in place for you. So insurance, a discomfort zone, insurance can be mind numbing, but insurance is very important. And I want you to be well informed.